Nigeria records $7.18 billion increase in 2019, reports by NBS. Custom makes 697 arrests, 7.4 billion naira seizures, at missed border closure. There is no cost to panic, says Finance Minister, despite oil price slash. Over 1 trillion naira wiped off from the stock market in just three days amid growing fears of coronavirus spread and declining crude oil price. Well, thanks for joining us on today's business. I am Mercy Frank. Today we're going to bring you the current trends and what is happening in the economy. I know you're expecting to see David Babu DK. He's a little bit under the weather, but don't worry, he'll be back shortly. Um, we we'll have to start with what we have um, in the current market today. And we'll start from a recent report about um, Nigeria's economy. Now, the latest ICAEW economic report has described Nigeria's economic performance as being sluggish and weighing heavily on Western and Central Africa's prospect, with regional growing rising only marginally to 3.1% in 2020. Now, the Institute of Chartered Accountants in England and Wales latest report on economic updates in Africa for first quarter of 2020, which was released yesterday, says the low oil price may further prompt the federal government to impose additional foreign exchange restrictions. Now, it added that such restrictions, along with the protection policies, such as the border closure, would prevent economic activities from gaining more traction. However, it rated Nigeria as the fifth largest tourist destination in Africa, after Egypt, South Africa, Morocco, and Tanzania. Now, it rated Nigeria fifth in terms of spending, with local receipts from international visitors amounting to an estimated $2.4 in 2019. And now um, to capital importation. The total value of capital importation in 2019 stood at 23.99 billion naira, which is an increase of 7.18 billion naira over 16.81 billion naira recorded in 2018. Now, this represented a growth of 42.69%. The National Bureau of Statistics disclosed this on Tuesday in its report on Nigerian capital importation for quarter four. Now, by sector, it stated that shares dominated with the highest amount of capital imported in quarter four of 2019. Now, the embassy stated that the largest amount of capital importation by type was received through foreign portfolio investment, followed by other investment and foreign direct investment. Now, part of the report read that the total value of capital importation into Nigeria stood at $3.8 billion in the fourth quarter of 2019. Now, this represents a decline of 32.42% when compared to the third quarter of 2019 and a 77.67% increase when compared to the fourth quarter of 2018. All right, um, still on importation issue, we are moving to border closure. Uh, the Nigerian Customs Service says it has arrested about 697 illegal immigrants and seized contraband goods worth 7.4 billion naira, seven months into the partial closure of the nation's borders. Now, the Comptroller General, NCS, Ahmed Ali, said this in a statement on Tuesday. Now, the statement signed by the Public Relations Officer, Mr. Joseph Atta Ali, said the border closure has saved the country huge resources and enhanced national security. Now, the importation of drugs and proliferation of small arms and light weapons, which usually fuel terrorism and other forms of criminality in the country, have been considerably curtailed, the, custom, the customs boss also said. Now, he noted that the agricultural sector has also received a boost due to the restriction placed on the importation of rice and other prohibited food items. All right, now, um, to importation of petrol, Nigeria spent 1.713 trillion naira on importation of premium motor spirit, also known as petrol, in 2019, representing 42% decline from 2.5 trillion naira spent in 2018. Now, the National Bureau of Statistics, NBS, disclosed this in its foreign trade statistics for the fourth quarter of 2019. According to the NBS data, full import accounted for 10.1% of Nigeria's total import in 2019, 
compared to 22.4 percent recorded in 2018. In addition, the report noted that the PMS import accounted for 66.9 percent of the total of 2.56 trillion naira spent on fuels and lubricants. The report also noted that the, f the total import of goods to that 16.96 trillion naira, about 28.8% increase from 13.17 trillion naira recorded in 2018. Now, the MBS disclosed that Europe maintained Nigeria's major trading partner in 2019, with 7.62 trillion naira, followed by Asia in Africa with 5.42 trillion naira and 3.92 trillion naira, while Nigeria's trading with Oceania stood at 183 billion naira. Wow, pretty interesting there. Uh, still on petrol importation, the authorities have previously been working um, collaboratively to ensure that ship owners and ship managers are fully aware that the port state control inspections will be carried out to ensure full compliance. Now, all ships not fitted with an EGS have been prohibited from burning non-compliant fuel since 1st January 2020, although its carriage for combustion purposes is also prohibited from 1st March 2020. Now, PSC inspections will be carried out in accordance with the IMO's guidelines for PSC on the MAPOL Annex VI Chapter 3. In circumstances where compliance fuel cannot be obtained, a fuel or a non-availability report must be submitted to flag state and competent authority at the first available port of call. Now that's a good move there um, by the Nigerian Port Authority. Um, let's move over to crude oil production, where the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, NNPC, has expressed its readiness to strategically put in place measures that would alleviate the cost of crude oil production in Nigeria to create a market for Nigeria's crude and make Nigeria a choice destination for foreign direct investment. The Group Managing Director of the NNPC, um, Melikiari, made this known at the Central Bank of Nigeria Roundtable discussion in Abuja yesterday. Now, Malam Kiari stated that at the moment, uh, the cost of crude oil production production in the country was within the range of $15 to $17 per barrel, adding that some leaders in the industry such as Saudi Arabia's cost of production is between $4 and $5 per barrel. He added that due to the coronavirus pandemic, Nigeria has about 50 cargoes of crude oil that have not found landing, adding that this implies that there are no off-takers for them for now due to drop in demand. Uh, I must say that's a huge uh, difference in the cost of crude oil production between Saudi Arabia and uh, Nigeria. And over to oil price crash, uh, the federal government on Wednesday allayed fears of an economic crisis in view of the effects of the crash in the global oil prices and the coronavirus epidemic on the nation's economy. Now, the Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Mrs. Zainab Ahmed, called on Nigerians not to panic as a drastic fall in global oil price threatens the country's 2020 budget as well as its macroeconomic stability. Now she gave the assurance just as the Central Bank of Nigeria, Governor um, Godwin Emifiele said the CBN had already embarked on measures to significantly reduce lending rates which have resulted in total banking credits rising to over 17.4 trillion naira as of January. Now she said, quote, but for all of us in this room, now speaking to those um, in the room, we have a responsibility to ensure that we do not spread panic and that we do not allow speculation which will not be in favor of our country. We need to put our hands together to weather the storm." End of quote. Well, I hope Nigerian investors are listening to this and will be able to make um, decisions based on what the finance minister, minister has just said. Now to economic policies. Um, Experts in Nigeria's financial sector have said that the stamp duty charge of 50 naira on all transactions above 10,000 naira would hamper the Central Bank of Nigeria's drive to get uh, underserved Nigerians financially included. Specifically, Head of Tax and Corporate Advisory Services, PricewaterhouseCoopers, Nigeria, Taiwo Ujideli said the provision of the Finance Act 2019, which requires the payment of 50 naira, one of duty, and electronic receipt and transfers of amounts above 10,000 naira was unnecessary. Now, speaking at the ACC CTI and Finance Act Interactive Forum in Lagos, he said through the provision, though the provision aims to correct the issue of stamp duty charges transferred to customers by merchants, it has placed the burden on poor Nigerians who are not merchants but are charged 50 naira when they received amounts above 10,000 naira. 
And now to Central Bank of Nigeria. The CBN has extended the Nigeria Uniform Bank account number, that's the NUBAN, to all the financial institutions on this regulation. Now, the bank disclosed this in a circular posted on its website on Wednesday. Now, it stated that the extension would, um, the extension of the NUBAN to office would take effect from April 20, 2020, with a deadline of March 15, 2021, for full compliance, after which appropriate sanctions will be imposed for contraventions and non-compliance. The secular noted that in furtherance of its mandate, the development of electronic payment system in Nigeria, the CBN issued the revised standards on Nuban for banks and other financial institutions for the efficient operations of electronic funds transfer and check clearing operations by DMBS and uh, OFIS. All right, um, let's move over to infrastructure where uh, we're hearing that the amount required for maintenance of the federal route to Nigeria annually is at 125 billion naira and not 36 billion as allocated for capital budget in the 2020 appropriation bill. The Federal Road Maintenance Agency on Tuesday, according to uh, FEMA, the capital releases to the agency has been inadequate. But despite this, about 5,000 kilometers of federal roads were fixed and maintained by the organization in 2019. The managing director of FEMA, Nuruddin Rafin Dadi, said this why played the host to the Senate Committee on FEMA, led by its chairman, Senator Geshem Abasi. Rafin Dadi said, ideally, 125 billion naira will be required every year to maintain all the federal roads as much as we would want to maintain them, put into consideration the asset value of roads and bridges across the country. Uh, from infrastructure, we just move over to um, SEC. The Securities and Exchange Commission has expressed worry that credits to agriculture sector in the last 10 years remains as low as 5%, severely hampering the sector's growth in no small measures. It said only the capital market has the capacity to unlock better access to credit and finance for the sector through innovative financing structures and products. Now, SEC further said that the same scenario is playing out in the national mineral um, sector when minerals are presently dug up on a subsistence basis and sold in markets around the world in a disorderly fashion. The acting director general of SEC, Mrs. Mary Uduk, disclosed this yesterday while briefing journalists on the commission's planned international conference for the Nigerian Commodities Market 2020, slated for Monday in Abuja. Uduk, however, stressed that despite the credit limitations, agriculture remained an important part of capable, uh, agriculture remained an important part capable of delivering on the country's food security needs, providing jobs, and increasing the country's foreign exchange earnings. Oh, that's a pretty good um, story there. Now, still in agriculture, we move over to life livestock. Uh, 60 years after the suspension of registration of cattle, sheep, and goods coming from neighboring countries, the federal government has disclosed plans to reintroduce the policy to curb spread of livestock disease across the country. It also unveiled plans to review government's policies with regards to movement of cattle, sheep, and goods between Nigeria and neighboring countries. The Agriculture Minister Sabu Nanono, while speaking at the inauguration of Government Council of the Nigerian Veterinary Council five years after the previous one was suspended, said the ministry was taking steps to reintroduce the registration to be able to track the movement across the country. He mentioned that foot and mouth disease is usually more endemic between the month of October. February and March, which is the time the livestock move from the north to the south. He charged the veterinarians to be more proactive in responding to this disease. Uh, I do hope uh, they are listening to this because I don't think we want to move from coronavirus to dealing with um, diseases in the livestock. You know, we eat them. All right. Um, Let's move over to food security. Uh, as the senior uh, policy advisors across sub-Saharan Africa have asked governments of countries in the sub-region to prioritize food and nutrition security, affirming that it is key to economic development and prosperity of any nation. According to them, it is not enough to only talk about food security, but it must be complemented with nutrition security to ensure a robust growth of the economy. They said making agriculture more nutrition sensitive ought to be promoted as a sustainable solution to the triple burden of malnutrition facing African countries. Now, the executive director, Arek, Professor Njuguna Ndugu, during a press briefing, pointed out that providing biofortified foods to tackle the challenge of malnutrition is only a temporal measure. 
but there is the need for holistic approach in producing stable um, foods that are rich in nutrient and content. All right, um, we have more for you uh, after this break. Um, we'll bring you more um, events and happenings in the business world. Don't go anywhere, please, to stay with us. Deliberations on the loan request report were supposed to have held on a different day from the day it was submitted, but the president of the Senate, Ahmed Lawan, insisted it should be debated immediately as the document might get to the press before it is deliberated in plenary. This is supposed to be our document. It's not a public document yet until we consider the document before it becomes public. Now, following agreement among lawmakers, the document be deliberated on. Chairman of the Senate Committee on Local and Foreign Debt, Clifford Odia, went ahead to present the committee's report. The proposed project is the Ministry of Power, Transportation, FCT, Works and Housing, Mining and Agriculture, and Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management, and Social Development are mostly ongoing projects and programs, in respect of which funds have been spent in the past, including loans. Minority leader Einaya Baribe called for a line-by-line -line consideration of the document to ensure that loans are only obtained to fund economically viable projects. It is when we get to the point of looking at each one of them that we will now determine which of these projects would help in growing our economy. We, in the National Assembly and also in the executive, have not been tracking the utilization of these loans to make sure that they are invested in the right places where revenue can accrue. His request was flatly rejected by the President of the Senate, who insisted that the process is not in tandem with legislative practice in the Senate. The reason why reports of committees come to the General House is so that we can make our inputs into those things. Now, we want to make our input and we're being shut out. We're just being told either pass or not pass. And I think that that is not very, very good for the economy of this. Uh, minority leader, I don't want uh, the discussion on this loan to degenerate into partisanship. The disagreement continued leading to a Please. closed door session which lasted for an hour Please. after which the request was approved. Close However, Lawan promised Aye. that the Senate will carry out oversight activities to ensure that the loan is used for the projects attached to them. As at September 2019, Nigeria's entire debt profile stood at 26.9 trillion naira. This has raised concerns on the dangers ahead for future generations. All right, um, welcome back. It's still to this business, and I'm Mercy Frank. Um, we go over to the manufacturing sector where manufacturers and Nigerians have been urged to uh, take advantage of the many opportunities that the African continental free trade area represents. Now, speaking on the theme, the fourth industrial revolution, the manufacturing sector minister of the industry, trade, and investment, Adini Adibayo, said the AFCFTA we expose the sector to trade within the region and uh, the sector to position itself to cash into it. He was speaking at the opening ceremony of Nigerian Manufacturing and Equipment Expo in Lagos. Take a listen. The manufacturing sector must prepare itself for the fourth industrial revolution coming in the age of after. And I am extremely pleased to see that the theme of this conference seeks to address the changes that we should expect. With the President's signing of the African Continental Free Trade Area Agreement, presents great opportunities for the manufacturing sector in Nigeria. We have an opportunity to extend our reach across Africa, where we are already exporting commodities such as fast-moving consumer goods, cement, and even fintech. This is crucial because we are also the target market for all of Africa. And the upcoming implementation of African uh, Continental Trade, uh, the Free Trade Agreement, calls for stakeholders collaboration to anticipate and respond appropriately to the evolving manufacturing ecosystem, which is being ushered in by the rapid adoption of these new technologies, technologies such as um, robotics, big data, artificial intelligence, addif uh, ad uh, addi additive manufacturing, and so on, are influencing the manufacturing systems of all industrializing nations.